Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to some sweet drifting by the Doom Bus. In today's episode, we are going to be beefing up our defenses yet again, so that we don't have to constantly use the Doom Bus in battles. Because as soon as this thing dies, we lose the game. And if anything else dies, we can always just repair them between battles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down two smaller turrets, two smaller bunker sections here and here, which will house different types of weaponry. The weapons I'm thinking of is an anti-missile cannon in addition to some weaker regular cannons such as the one on this bunker but far far smaller, and perhaps a giant cram cannon artillery volley, which would be loads of fun if not that practical. But at the end of the day, fun is fun. Building them so close would also mean that each of the buildings could repair each other during the battle. So if we have a complete line of defensive buildings, eventually we would become utterly impenetrable. And of course, I also need to work on adding shields and stuff like that. Essentially, there's a lot to do, so let's just get to work. I think the first one I'm going to build is going to be over here, and it will focus on defense and anti-missile cannons. So let's get to work. Also, I will be swapping out some of these shells for frag shells very, very soon, because although the armor-piercing shells are better against fast targets, the fragment shells with inertial fuses causes just such damage to pretty much anything it hits, including shields. So let's start building our next bunker. Okay, so I've deviated a little bit from the original plan, so what we're going to do instead is have this type of building everywhere. This will be a very small, very compact, and yet incredibly heavily armoured building, which will house a single weapon similar to the Doom Box, although this weapon will be much smaller. The idea is I can copy and paste this building anywhere I wish, and because of the simplicity of the turret, it will be incredibly easy to manipulate and to alter depending on what I need at the time. We could easily have a slower firing 200mm cannon or we could have lots of 100mm cannons which is more likely to be what I am going to go with but also because of the small size it wouldn't be wasteful to convert these into anti-missile turrets and have that and just that as the focus of the building. This way missiles and cram shells should be pretty much negated. It should also be very time efficient since we're just going to be copying and pasting. Words are still difficult and I'm going to keep on building this thing up. Lots of heavy armor. It's not going to be cheap, but it should be very, very durable. Okay, so the first version of these towers, which we're going to be spamming all along this coastline, is going to be an anti-missile cannon. So what we're going to use is three flak warheads, one composite head, just to make sure the shell is accurate, and then most importantly, a timed fuse. The fuse itself is used with the munition warners, and then the laser designator on the turret itself, to detect the enemy cram shell or missile and then figure out how far away it is in terms of how long the shell takes to get there. Once the shell has been going for that long, it will simply detonate. Now the problem with this is that if a missile, for instance, is shot using the ejector add-ons and then the thrust activates, this can mess up the timing because of course the speed is more variable. The same goes for cram shells which are fired just under the water and then surface or are fired from a very, very high height. That can be a little bit odd for the time fuse, but it's definitely the easiest one to use. We could also use a proximity fuse, but I'm not a big fan of that. Use a proximity fuse, and that sounds like the chorus of a really bad dance song. So I think this will be okay. It's not the best shell in the world, but it's a decent speed and an okay amount of damage. If we fire five, maybe six, at each incoming missile, it should be a guaranteed destruction. And that also goes for a lot of cram shots. Okay, so I've just placed down the anti-missile controller cannon, so let's see if we can figure out how this actually works, because honestly, this has been quite a while. So, acceptable shots per missile, I'm going to up to about four, or maybe even five, since we are shooting very small shots at a rapid fire. 
Priority loss, I think, should be about one. That seems reasonable. Acceptable angle seems fairly reasonable. The angle we need to turn to engage what we find acceptable, the priority will only be lost above this angle. Okay, that I don't really care. You can shoot anywhere, that's fine. Priority lost per extra... Actually, no, no, no. 90, I'd say, would be the maximum. If there's a missile behind us, don't bother trying to turn around. Just fire at the ones in front of you. That seems more reasonable to me. Priority loss stays the same. Acceptable miss angle will be about the same... Ah, now that's now this is the one which kept on messing me up last time. The acceptable range all the way to a thousand. We have very accurate, rather quick shells. That's absolutely fine. Priority loss. I will actually increase slightly. There we are. The loss of priority per meter of missile range above the acceptable limit. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's perfectly correct. Uh, these two can stay at zero, that's fine. Yeah, okay, I think that will work out. So now, we need to actually put this down to 100 meters, because currently, sorry, 100 millimeters. It would be awesome if we were shooting 100 meter shells, but not quite working right now. Max fire rate I'm going to take down to about 250, at least for now, until we test it out a little bit more. And the maximum gauge should be 100. We can always change this every time we alter the different turrets, but for now 100 is exactly what we would like. There we are. That should be big enough. No overclocking. Everything else seems fine. You may spin. The only reason I don't have the other one spinning is because it causes some really weird bugs when you have that many barrels spinning at once at such a high speed. Now, how's everything else doing? Okay, all good. So let's add ourselves some barrels, and then this should be pretty much ready to go, except for the fact I have no munition warners yet. So we'll put the munition warners all along the side here, as soon as we add a flat section. Laser designator is set, and so we are pretty much good to go, except once again for the munition warners. So let's add those now, and then we are essentially finished. So, how do we add the munition warners? I hear you all scream in unison. A little bit distracted there by accidentally clicking on decorations when I was after missiles, when really I should have been after AI. So here we are, and the munition warner. The munition warner component spots missiles, cram shells, and advanced cannon shells within the field of view. Okay, that's exactly what we want, except for we do need some connectors. Now this is going to go inwards anyway, so let's do that, then add the munition warners, we'll add two like that, then two along the side. These can then be connected to the AI nice and easily from underneath, like so. We'll have to make sure this is heavy armour though, since we are weakening this little section. Oh, it's a derpy face! Hello, I kill missiles! <laughs> It's just looking more and more like a face. I think at this point I may as well embrace it. It's like a little crocodile with a gun in its head. Time for a fun test. Let's see if repair tentacles work between buildings. Yes, they do. Okay, great. Which means each of these buildings we place down can now heal each other, making them very, very difficult to kill, especially when they're so heavily armoured, and the armour will keep on regenerating. The armour is just about done on the outside, over five layers on the front, three layers on both of the sides, and two layers on the back. The ammunition is also completely coated in heavy armour, and the main chamber is protected from the top and the bottom. Although these will be somewhat lacking in offensive capabilities, in terms of just sheer survivability and staying power, these will be very hard to kill, and since they are going to be healing each other, unless that heavy armour gets very quickly 
stripped away, they should be able to, to survive a serious onslaught. And honestly, the turrets using the frag shells, even with the slower cannons, which will only be around about 250 rounds per minute, unless I go a little bit more insane with the inside, which will reduce the armour, the damage will still be pretty substantial, especially with so many of them. The next one I will likely be placing over here, and then the one after that we will go along the shoreline over here. Also, it's weirdly bright in this morning. A good sign, I feel. I will be honest, this is looking more and more like a tank with every block I add, but either way... I am still fairly happy with it. This thing is going to be ridiculous when it comes to the actual fighting, which I hope is somewhat soon. It's been a long time since a battle broke out, at least two day cycles, and I'm getting a little bit bored now. And plus, this is ready to go. I am ready to test this thing out. I'm just hoping we don't need a regular detection system, and only the munition warners and such will be good enough. Now, we could actually make it so that this is, a, is both an aggressive and a defensive structure, but for now, I will focus on it just being purely defensive. And now, just waiting for some more heavy armour. So, I decided, out of curiosity, to bring our new building into the creative mode just to make sure it actually worked. Just to make sure I've set it all up correctly, because it's been quite some time. And, well... It's a good job that this version isn't the one I'm going to be copying and pasting. The version I will be copying and pasting doesn't have the turret on the inside, and doesn't have all these lower sections. Because, well, you can sort of place it like this by mistake. Which would be very, very annoying. Time to test out the anti-missile system. So this is one of the mini-vehicles which was surrounding our Christmas fortress. It's quite powerful in that it has a really nasty set of burst damage because of just how many missiles it has. If our defense system can somehow defend against the entire volley, I would say that is a huge success. I've also put down quite a weak shield on the front, just so we can deflect some of the frag shells. So begin. They're going to be very hard to aim for since they're moving so erratically, but there we go. A bit of a slip up at the start, but now they're going in a straight line. They are all being stopped. Not quite fast enough though. Very close. Only two or three got through from the entire volley, but even so, that was not the best. Try again. I think the explosions need to be bigger, that's the problem. There's not enough explosion radius. Oh, but saying that this time, it was pretty much perfect. Look at that. Very, very effective. I am unsure about this. And I think you are now out of ammo. Well, almost. Only half a, a volley being spawned this time. It seems like, if the missiles are coming from far enough away, so that they straighten up before hitting the target, it's going to be really effective. However, if they are still wandering around and moving, it's not going to be that fantastic. Still good though. Still happy with the first test. So I'll be right back once I've made a few changes. Okay, I'm somewhat confident about these shells. They're still not too slow, but they have a lot more damage per shot. And this is the volley from the Doom Bus. So if we can stop this, I consider it a huge success. And if we can't, I'll still be happy enough. We've already destroyed one missile before I got to pause it. So let's see how this works. All of the missiles are being stopped, even though, of course, sadly, the fragments do go forwards, and the shield deflected most of it. It didn't go through the front armor. So, yep, that was a massive success. The missiles were stopped, the thing was only mildly damaged, and we will have a few of these along our row, so we should be able to stop them very, very easily. Now, a more efficient way of doing this would, of course, be to add an anti-missile laser system, or perhaps flares, or anti-missile missiles, but I just find the concept of an anti-missile cannon to be such a cool one. It's such a novel idea. It's just fun to watch. So I'm happy with that. I do want to keep testing to a minimum, so let's go back into the campaign 
and load this back in. There we are, it's now reloading and our missile defense is active. The next one I'm going to create will most likely be a missile silo variant and then after that we will have the cram cannon variant. Now with the cram cannon version I'm tempted to not use a turret but instead have stationary weapons. Although this means our arc of fire is going to be quite low, it does mean I can fit a lot into this very small space so the shells will be absolutely devastating. We're going to sacrifice maneuverability and our ability to aim in certain areas for more sheer damage. Also, still no enemies. It's taking a while, which is making me a little bit nervous, honestly. Okay, so what I've decided to do, because I was getting bored, is I've tried to lure this enemy over here all the way back to our base. This way we can have our defenses kill it Moving rather than risk our Moving MCV, out. our lovely Moving Doom out. Bus. Come Moving on, out. keep on following Moving me out. you slow bugger. This is a really slow enemy and I kind of Moving wish out. that I had already made a Moving satellite. Out. I will do that very soon so we can see enemies a little bit easier. Moving this out. is the Mortar which actually is a perfect enemy to Moving fight out. us Moving because out. it means we Moving can out. test out our anti-missile system against cram shells. It's going to be a really, really good test. No! However, when this battle starts, what we can do is spawn in these two and pretend that I never got the MCV involved. Isn't that perfect? Okay, let's begin the battle and let's see how we do. Just a single mortar against us, we should have no problems. I've also added a few fragment warheads to our current shell setup. That's it, stay above the water at least a little bit and we can keep on attacking you. But I'm hoping you get at least one attack against us so that we can test out our new gun. Come on, just get a little bit closer. No, it's AI dead, we've killed it. <laughs> we've actually killed it. Oh, now these aren't true frag warheads, true frag shells. They only have one frag warhead and the rest is still kinetic. The fragment side of it is just so they can get around shields at least a little bit. Ah well. Not the best test, but at least we get to move even further towards the next resource zone. There is now a second group heading towards us, but whilst they do, I've put our MCV back on the resource zone so that we can continue to harvest. What I really need to do is build a little harvesting outpost here so that the MCV will never go into combat, because once again, if this thing dies, we lose the game. So one bad battle, and we're dead. If this thing is never in fights, we can't lose. At least, that's the idea behind it. So before the next fight, I've decided we are going to convert the Doom Box into a Frag Cannon. This way, we should be very effective against pretty much everything, except for submarines. So we have four Fragment Warhead bodies, all on minimum cone. We have four gunpowder casings, an inertial fuse, which means these will now counter shields, and a regular head on the front. I could sacrifice a little bit of accuracy and add one more warhead, however this would also slow down the shells, and since they are now below 300 meters per second anyway, I don't think that's really worth it. Either way though, these are going to be very, very nasty. I've just realized something, I'm not sure if the anti-missile cannon controller will actually aim at cram cannon shells. It will definitely aim at missiles, but I'm not even sure if that's how it works. I know that the laser version does fire at them, but I'm not sure about the cannon version. If we go over to the laser, we have the laser munition defense. Oh. That's worrying, actually. When the enemies get here, we might not be able to shoot down cram cannon shells. I've only just realized this. Because originally, the laser defense could also only fire at missiles, but they changed it, and for some reason, I thought that meant they also changed the advanced cannons. That's not the case. This could go worse than expected then. Right now, then, we are pretty vulnerable to cram cannon shells. Which means what we really need to do is have one of these with the laser munition defense rather than the cannon defense. Which of course I can do since I'm going to have at minimum six of these along the shore. One of them can be laser based. That's kind of annoying. 
And so it begins. We are fighting against the tank, a new vehicle, and the mortar once again. So let's hope the mortar dies nice and quickly since we can't defend against its cram shells. Either way though, here we go. Whoa, that is a lot of missiles heading towards us. Hopefully the anti-missile system will work, and it is perfectly. Loads of them being removed there, although it was looking the wrong way for a couple of the last ones. We've just done a lot of damage to the mortar, although here come the cram shells. Oh, thank God I've got so much armor. Whoa, taking the cram shell like a boss. The frag shells going through the enemy mortar and pretty much defeating it, although it is doing one last shot against us. Oh. Are you not figuring out that there's land in the way? Well done, defense system. Seems like the AI is offline for the anti-missile defense system. That's not good. Okay, the mortar is dead. Now to focus on the tank, which is in in very clear view and instantly taking it down apparently a lot more vulnerable than the mortar by the looks of things the turret was almost the entire vehicle how did they take you down how did they turn you off you are definitely active but something got knocked out very Oh, oh, okay. We've built the AI quite vulnerably on this. That's a weakness I've just now learned, and I need to change pretty much instantly. One of the missiles, or cram shells, hit low down, and it damaged the AI, which is just there, or should be just there, underneath the armor. What I need to do is put the AI closer to the back in its own compartments. It was a little bit weird building on such uneven terrain, and that clearly cost us a lot of defense. But we did survive. We are still the survivors, and this box is still absolutely brutal. And the healing from each other was definitely working out well. And kind of glitching. And kind of beautiful. I'm afraid, though, with that, I am all out of time for today's episode. I will improve this before the next video, and then we will copy and paste it all along the shoreline before finally building some proper vehicles to go out and claim us the new resource zone, which apparently is pretty lightly protected. It could be quite easy to take that over and get all of the resource. So, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favorites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continue in the future. Like I say, in the next video, we will have more defenses and possibly more aggressive defensive capabilities. Thank you again, and goodbye.